there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Well today we're going to be talking about overheating PT cruisers and this is actually something that I haven't personally experienced. I haven't had any problems with PTs overheating although this particular one I bought and it supposedly has overheated and uh, I guess now is as good a time as any to tell you guys that this is a non-runner. The engine's going to have to come out uh, before it will even start. I've been trying to just get it started so I could do uh, drive around the yard and kind of test everything and uh, I'll drop a little clip here of how that sounds. It, uh, it was trying to start but uh, I don't think it has enough compression and I haven't had a chance to run a compression test on it but uh, I think that engine's going to have to come out of there in any case. So we're going to do that at some point on the channel here. Stay tuned for that. But today we're going to be talking about overheating PTs. And uh, I figured this would be a good uh, one to demonstrate on because it has the front end parts removed. And I can easily show you all the different parts of the cooling system. Now this is a turbo model. And I'll kind of explain to you the differences there. There's not many between a, a turbo and a non-turbo as far as the cooling system goes. Okay guys, here's the initial start of your cooling system right here and here. These are the main grounding points on the car. So they're located right down here by the uh, battery and the air box. And why I say that's the start of your cooling system is because your cooling system on a PT Cruiser is uh, largely electronically based. And as such, the ground points are vital to its uh, proper performance. It ultimately the fans are controlled by the uh, PCM here and uh, they, it gathers input from the, uh, the cooling sensor and also the vehicle speed sensor. So it, it, the uh, coolant temperature sensor is basically your, your first uh, point in the cooling system and then it sends a signal to the PCM and then it sends a signal to the fan control relay and then that sends the signal to the fan to uh, engage the fan. So if it's if you're having an overheat issue, um, one of the first things you should do is clean up all the ground points. So there's ground points there, there's a, a ground point there. And uh, that ensures all those signals are traveling correctly in the system and all that kind of thing. Because you could really, uh, you could replace everything in the cooling system. And I've heard of people doing that. And still not solve the issue and it could be as simple as one of those ground points not making good contact so start there that's pretty much free to do that and then uh, the next thing I do parts wise is the actual temperature sensor which is down here it's hard to really show on camera but it's it's just down on the side of the uh, thermostat housing there which is, is uh, that's what this is here and um, also, the rad cap is another cheap thing that you can change that can really affect it because the, the rad cap regulates the pressure in your radiator. Like that's what the, uh, that's what this is. That's a, a pressure valve. And uh, when you're, when the pressure gets up there, it uh, lifts that up and it allows coolant to flow into that line, go into the uh, overflow. And that's a vented tank there, so it uh, the uh, the air essentially vents off, and any coolant that goes in goes in there. But it will it'll also siphon back into the system as it cools. So you can see you can see that shiny stuff on there, and there's shiny stuff in there. I think that shows on camera. That is a leak stop. So if you see that. When you're buying one of these or whatever, beware, that means they were trying to stop a leak in the cooling system. So, of course, if you've got a blowing head gasket, that's going to pump air into the cooling system. And it basically, that'll airlock the water pump. And then it won't function properly and circulate the coolant and it will overheat. And so it's going to be the same thing if your cooling system was recently serviced and not properly purged. The PTs all, all have a purge valve right uh, here, and that is uh, 3 8 and so uh, yeah, it's it's 
standard size even though the car is all metric so you need a 3 8 uh, socket on a nut driver works best and you crack that loose before you fill the system before not after not during don't bring it up to temperature and then crack it to bleed the air out before when the system's completely empty you open that up and then as you're filling the system the air that's being displaced by the coolant going into the system comes out there that's the whole idea of it so you leave it open until it flows out with solid coolant and that means that the coolants come all the way up to the valve all the way up to the thermostat that's what happens is the uh, you get an air bubble under your thermostat and then that basically pumps into your water pump and air locks the system and nothing circulates your water pump can't pump air it's a impeller it relies on having liquid around it to uh, to uh, pump and so then once you've closed that valve off and sealed it you just slowly uh, bring it up to the cap level and while you're doing that what I like to do is I'll just come over here and just squeeze the elbow on the hose gently and that uh, kind of purges those last bubbles up and out the cap so if you're cooling system was recently worked on uh, that might be your whole issue is you might just have an air bubble in there and what I'd recommend then is just draining the system right back out into a clean pan and filling it up properly as I said have that valve open before you start to fill and then as you're filling the air is going to be coming out that valve and then you you lock that down after it's full now another cause of overheating on any car can be a sticking thermostat so that is just right there that's about a half hour job on the PT you just got to remove two 10 millimeter uh, nuts or bolts or whatever there and pop that off and new thermostat goes in it comes with the o-ring seal so they're they're really easy to change and you don't even have to drain all the coolant on some cars the uh, water pump itself can be a cause of overheating on the PT I wouldn't say that would be a case your, your water pump could leak and uh, maybe if it was leaking bad enough that would uh, depressurize the, the cooling system or cause it to suck air or something. But as far as like the impeller, the water pump's down here by the way, that's why I'm aiming in this area. It's down under the timing cover, it's driven off the timing belt and as far as the, uh, the impeller on it is actually uh, steel or, or cast steel or whatever. Uh, some of them were aluminum and they erode it away over time like I know Ford Taurus has had that problem and stuff and they'd actually overheat due to a failed water pump and it was twofold with them because when the impeller broke up it would uh, clog up the uh, the heater core and the, the radiator. The heater core is another thing. Um, it's a part of the cooling system as well. It's, it's up in the dash of course and the heater box. Those are actually the heater hose is right back there and uh, one thing you can do you can use a temperature gun which i have shown in the previous video how you can diagnose things with the temperature gun and you can check all these lines like you got your heater lines coming here and uh, you know you've got your upper rad hose and your lower rad hose uh, like coming off the water pump down here and uh, if you've got the engine running and up to temperature and you just go around and you scan on the on the thermostat hosing on the radiator on all those lines and stuff it will give you a clue to where your your problem is like if you've got an air lock in it or whatever then it's it's going to get really hot in the engine and your radiator is going to stay cool because it's not circulating properly or if your your heater is not working and your heater core is lines are, are ice cold then it's not circulating through your heater core you can process of elimination using the temperature gun to uh, scan it and check it that way another thing if your PT's overheating you want to check out your cooling fan so the most basic test is to reach in here and spin the fan blades by hand and uh, the fan blades are directly connected to the fan motor so it's just an electric motor it should turn perfectly smoothly with very little resistance if it's got like hard spots in it like stiff spots when you're turning the blade or it's stiff to turn that's a uh, that's a problem and you're going to need a new fan motor so that's a pretty simple one to diagnose there but uh, there's other things other reasons why your fans might not start if they're just not starting 
and you reach down there and spin that and it's spinning nice and freely like it should then you want to come over here and there's a couple things you can check in here there's uh your fan relays for none turbo i guess you got a high speed and a low speed that's another thing the fan is a high and a low speed and so it could be working on low speed and not on high speed um, and it could be overheating because it's only running on the low speed. So you want to confirm that these relays are good. And there's also uh, a fuse there, a 40 amp fuse. So you want to check and confirm that that's all good. And uh, some of them have relays down here, down by the fan plug. So, uh, you know, I, I think you can swap those relays around and, uh, and check them that way. So another test to do is uh, engage your air conditioning and make sure your fans come on. Uh, do it when the vehicle's right up to temperature and see if your engine kind of drags down and, and idles rough. That's a dead giveaway that your fans are only running on low speed. Also, if they cycle on and off or your air conditioning cycling on and off, that's because your air conditioning's overpressuring because of uh, high temperature. Um, like the cooling fans have to move a certain amount of uh, air through the condenser to keep the air conditioning system happy. These cars typically just run at half on the temperature gauge. I have seen them run a bit lower, but never higher. So if yours is running higher, that's not normal. And uh, if you do run into an overheat scenario and you notice your gauge is going up, honestly, don't let it go past three quarters. Uh, if you let it go all the way to the red, what happens when you do shut it down, it will continue to uh, spike up. And uh, you're going to end up warping the head and uh, having a blown head gasket and a very expensive repair bill. Now, if your PT Cruiser is equipped with an automatic transmission as this one is, it's going to have some sort of a transmission cooler. The uh, early PTs normally used an uh, um, in-radiator cooler. That means they have a uh, basically a, a copper or aluminum coil inside the radiator that the transmission fluid circulates through and it's surrounded with the engine coolant so it basically keeps the transmission temperature at the same as the engine. Um, I don't really like that system. There's two problems with it. Uh, one, if your engine overheats, your transmission overheats as well. And the other is, and the, the PTs actually had this issue, those uh, lines inside, internally in there, that coil, had a uh, habit of bursting. And then uh, you'd get mixing of the uh, transmission fluid and uh, coolant, which is very bad uh, for the transmission. It would pretty much destroy the transmission when that happens. So uh, Chrysler did update that for uh, all the O3 models they all had. Uh, well, they normally had an external cooler down under here. This isn't it, though. This is an intercooler because this is a turbo model. But this is where you'd see it on the non-turbo models. They have a nice big uh, external cooler right down here under the bumper. And you see it through the lower grill on the, when the bumper cover's on. But this one, it's got an in external cooler, too. And it's just right in there. Maybe I can lift my grill up a little and show you. Right here. Right here. Like this right here is the air conditioning condenser back here. But this is the uh, transmission cooler. And then the, uh, the radiator itself is uh, right here. You can see there's actually uh, three layers of things. And then, and then four if you count the intercooler on this because it's the turbo. Okay guys, I hope you found the video helpful. I, I do normally try to work with real world examples, but in this case I'd had some requests for the video and didn't really have a real world example to work with. So uh, I hope I covered everything sufficiently. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe.